Did the Biden-Harris administration authorize the military to kill American voters if they lose the 2024 election? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Without a doubt, we are living in interesting times in US politics. We've come to such a point that people seriously believe the absolute craziest stories about US presidential candidates Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Why are we even having an election? We should just determine our leaders by making them compete in the Hunger Games. If Trump is elected, we all know what his opponents say he'll become. A mega mega fascist dictator. And let's not forget, he'll round up his enemies if he's elected. Though I'm not sure how well he'd be able to keep them contained since he's shown he's not the best at finishing building walls. But it's not just Trump. Word is Biden and Harris have approved military use of lethal force against US citizens. As you know, the Democrat deep state always accuses you of what they themselves are doing or planning to do. This is a big deal. This has never before been done. It says prepare for civil unrest and martial law and killing US citizens. But right now, this is a step, it's bold. And to me that is, uh, it's now official to have a police state. This would open up the door for the careless uh, use and if more frequent and legal. It'll yeah. be legal now, so nobody will have to worry about that. Send in the troops. We need you to shoot a couple of these people. Yeah. What a world we are living in where I can coherently play a clip of Alex Jones and Ron Paul back to back. But RFK Jr. is also raising the alarm about the directive as well, that it will allow the use of lethal force to kill Americans on U.S. soil. The U.S. military, under this directive, it will become legal for the U.S. military to shoot and kill Americans who engage in political protests because they disagree with policies in the White House. So Harris went from prosecutor to judge, jury, and executioner. While terrifying, it's a very well-rounded resume. So where is this coming from? What is the directive? Is the US government really going to use the military to kill Americans? Well, it all has to do with the Department of Defense's Directive 5240.01. It's a DOD document that details policies for assistance to US law enforcement. The directive, originally issued in 2007, was last updated September 27th of this year. And because this is a very close election happening soon, people assumed this was no mere coincidence. The story gained so much traction that the DOD felt the need to come out and deny that troops will be allowed to use force during the election. Many fact checkers and news outlets also came out backing the DOD's claims. And as you can imagine, that immediately quelled everyone's fears because there's no one the public trusts more these days than fact checkers in the mainstream media. So. Is there any merit to these warnings? Did the Biden and Harris administration just give the military the ultimate authority? Looks like it's time for another segment of, wait, is that true? Let's start by doing something as controversial as actually reading the directive. It would be so nice if people actually read through the 22 page document before drawing conclusions, but since not even elite college students can handle reading books from cover to cover, I suspect a lot of people are jumping the gun by relying on snippets they find on social media. Because why research and form your own conclusions when you can just get them from someone online? Directive 5240.01 specifically addresses DOD intelligence activities and the support provided by its intelligence components to law enforcement. But here's what catches the public's attention. Section 3.3.A2C. It has a lot of scary sounding terms like potential for lethality, use of force, and lethal force, which would all make for excellent metal band names, by the way. That line doesn't appear in the original or previous versions of the directive, and by itself the addition seems scary, like they want to start using some lethal force. So what's going on? Well, section 3.3 .3 talks about levels of authority, another great metal band name, it establishes what level of approval must be obtained before various types of activities may be carried out. For example, it mandates that the Secretary of Defense must sign off on assistance that may involve the use of lethal force to civilian law enforcement authorities. So this is all procedurals and bureaucracy, which I personally find even more terrifying. 
This is similar language used in a directive that governs DoD support to civil authorities related to certain operations, which was last updated in 2018. Oddly enough, no one's outraged about that directive, even though the language is about the same. The issue is, just because the phrase, lethal force, was added into the directive doesn't mean that there's been an actual change in policy. In fact, the directive explicitly requires that the use of force must comply with another directive, Directive 5210.56, which was last updated in 2020. That directive is the one that guides domestic use of force, and for comparison, it's much more restrictive than the rules of engagement that apply overseas. It seems the reason why Directive 5240.01 changed was to have more consistent language throughout federal government guidelines. I can't believe I'm actually accusing the government of being consistent. These are truly wild times. So are the people freaking out about this just angry at the language? Don't you hate anti-semantics? The main thing you need to keep in mind is that new powers cannot be issued in directives. By definition, a directive isn't a statute, nor is it an executive order. It's more of a how to implement existing policies within already established legal boundaries. And so nothing in this directive overrides the Posse Comitatus Act, which bars the federal military from participating in law enforcement, unless Congress approves of it. So while the directive now has new language that may sound unsettling, no law has actually changed. So for now, we don't have to worry about getting pulled over for a speeding ticket by a tank. In fact, on multiple occasions, the directive explicitly says defense intelligence components must abide by the Posse Comitatus Act among many other policies. So no, the directive isn't going to suddenly make the US a police state. You need a ton of other policies for that to happen thanks to procedures and bureaucracy. <laughs> ah, well, that's a relief. Except, there's one exception to the Posse Comitatus Act, the 1807 Insurrection Act, which allows the president to use federal troops to restore order. And guess what? If Trump gets reelected, he'll use the Insurrection Act and we're all doomed, doomed. So remember, Trump is Hitler and he'll use the military to kill Americans. And Harris is a communist who'll use the military to kill Americans. This is what US presidential elections have become. Of course, there is an alternative to this madness. Ladies and gentlemen, I speak of America Uncovered's officially endorsed presidential candidate Chris Christie. Sure, he's not on the ballot, and the US elections are coming up in just a week, but at least he's not a fascist, Marxist, authoritarian, Stalin, Hitler, Mussolini. And can you really say that about the other candidates? Before you go, I've been trying to hide topics YouTube considers too controversial in gaming content. Check out the latest about teens, identity, and grooming in the game Life is Strange Double Exposure. Don't tell YouTube what it's about. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thank you for watching America Uncovered.